Hello, this is a lesson on uh, the binomial theorem, uh, and this is about a binomial expansion. So you're familiar with binom binomial expansion all the way back in algebra. If I just had x plus y squared, we could expand that, and you would do that through a method of FOIL, perhaps, and you get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So that's a binomial expansion. And the binomial theorem is a method of binomial expansion that is going to allow us to expand expressions that have these higher powers. So when I look at, the, if you look at the power on this binomial, I've got a power of 4. So I do not want to execute this binomial expansion by doing x minus four, uh, 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1, although we could. Uh, there's a much more efficient way to do it, and we also want to take into account that we can be looking at even higher powers than 4, and we want to be able to deal with higher and higher powers, and since there's a pattern to this expansion, uh, we want to take advantage of that. Now, the first element of the expansion is that there is a coefficient, and I'm going to write that coefficient like this, so that may be a new notation to you. What this, what, how, what this notation means is it is read in two ways. It is read 4, choose, 0, and another way that it is read is that it is the combination, the combination, the combo of 4 taken 0 at a time. All right, now, there's some explanation that can go into that, and that's something that we'd probably save for a later lesson. What we, all we want to know now is that this uh, 4 choose 0 is something that you can key into a, any scientific calculator. So a scientific calculator or a graphing utility will allow you to key in this 4 choose 0. That's one thing to know about it. Another thing to know about it is that there is a formula for evaluating it. So I've included this formula now, uh, the combination of n taken r at a time, and it's a formula that you execute uh, through a, some evaluation of factorials. So for this 4 choose 0, that would be 4 choose 0 is equal to 4 factorial over 4 minus 0, which is 4 factorial, uh, times 0 factorial. Okay, now you might have learned or you may not have learned that 0 factorial is equal to 1. So what have I got? I've got 4 factorial over 4 factorial, 0 factorial is 1, so this 4 choose 0 is 1. So it's not going to affect anything, but I just want to include it there so that I, we just stick with the pattern. And the pattern is going to be 4 choose 0. Now I'm going to take the x to the 4th. So I take the first term to the fourth power, and I'm going to take the second term, the negative 1, to the 0 power. Now it turns out, as we move on and we do more and more of these expansions, you're not going to include this 4 choose 0, and you're not going to include negative 1 to the 0. Those are always going to produce factors of 1, 1 times 1, which is not going to affect the outcome. But I want to include it here so that we can see the complete pattern. And then the next one is going to go 4 choose 1, the x to the 4th, or the x is going to drop to the 3rd power, and the negative 1 is going to go to the 1st power. Now, whether or not you have seen this before, I think that you could probably pick up the pattern already. You have this 4 uh, choose 0, you have this, this business with this c, and you see it goes 4c and then a 0, and then it goes 4c and then a 1. So what do you think the next one is going to be? I think you could probably figure that out. It's going to be 4c2. Uh, just a comment on that. No one would ever read it like that mathematically. In mathematics, we don't say 4c2. We don't read it from left to right. Uh, as I said earlier in the notes, it's uh, 4 choose 2, or it is the combination of 4 taken 2 at a time. All right, and then continuing the pattern, Let's take another, uh, take another piece of the pattern here. See, x to the fourth power, x to the third power. So you are certainly know that the next one is going to be x to the second power. And then the negative 1, if we look at that one, that was going to be 
uh, negative 1 to the 0 power, negative 1 to the first power, and then it's going to be negative 1 to the second power. There. And then we can continue on with the next term, which is going to be plus, I'm going to go 4, choose 3. The x will drop to the first power. The negative 1 will go to the third power. And then I'm going to go plus 4, choose 4. And the x will go to the 0 power. And the negative 1 will go up to the fourth power. So that is the pattern of the expansion. And it looks like a kind of a little bit of a mess right now. But we can easily simplify this. We'll just take it a, a step at a step at a time here. Uh, again, 4 choose 0 is 1, negative 1 to the 0 is 1, and then I've got x to the 4th, so that's going to be x to the 4th, plus, now this uh, 4 choose 1, we're going to find that that is 4. Again, that can be a calculator key in. Also, this, this one always matches the exponent. So it's a pattern that you may already be aware of. And if you're not, I'll make you aware of it now. But 4 choose 1 is 4. And again, this business of what does 4 choose 1 mean? Maybe if we have a little time at the end of the video, maybe I'll, I'll go ahead and address it a little bit more. But for right now, just think of it as a formula or a calculator key in. So next we've got uh, x cubed. And this is going to be negative 1 to the first. So I've got 4 times x cubed times negative 1 to the first. So what's that going to do? That's going to give us uh, an x cubed here. And then that negative 1 is going to uh, take our, our plus sign here. That's going to make that a minus sign, right? So let's go ahead and just change that to a minus, minus sign. Then I'm going to have plus uh, the next uh, next one here, what is that? 4 choose 2 is uh, also a 4. x squared, uh, the negative 1 is squared, so that doesn't affect anything. On the next one, let's try and uh, move this along here. The negative 1 to the third is going to give us a minus. The 4 choose 4, I did that 4 choose 2 incorrectly. I'll go back and get in that in a second here. The 4 choose 3 is 4. I've got x to the first power. So I just took care of this, this term here. All right, this, uh, this one here, I uh, simplified that incorrectly. 4 choose 2 is not 4. 4 choose 2 is, uh, is actually 6. So let's replace... Replace that with a 6. Okay, and we've got the x there. And then where was that? So now I'm at the uh, 4 choose 4 there, which is 1. x to the 0 is 1. And then I've got uh, negative 1 to the 4th, which is 1. And that uh, should be the expansion of x minus 1 to the 4th. You follow the pattern, and then you simplify. Looks like a little bit of a mess, perhaps, but think about it. This is going to be necessary in order to expand in able, in, if we're going to be able to do very large expanses, expansions. And the really important thing is for you to understand the pattern, not just to follow the pattern. And case in point, let's take a look at this one. So here I've got uh, 2x plus y to the 20th. Now, I'm not going to ask you to expand that. You may know from Algebra 2, or, or if you, after you do several of these, you may know that whatever this exponent is, there's going to be one more term than that. So when I expand this, there's going to be 21 terms. But we won't do that. We're going to say that we've got 2x plus y to the 20th, and we're going to say, what is n equals 9? And by n equals 9, I'm going to say, what's the ninth term of the sequence? Now, I'm not going to go into all the detail on how I figure this out, because uh, I'm going to leave some of that up to you. But at the ninth term, uh, 2x is going to be raised to the 12th power. Now, you're going to have to think about that and why that is to the 12th power. 
but I will tell you that it is. And then that means that y is going to be raised to the eighth power. And I'll, I will make a comment on that. Well, y to the eighth power, something that we should notice for the, this pair of exponents is that this pair of exponents is always going to sum to the original exponent. So that's how I knew y to the eighth power. And then finally, I need the coefficient. Now, you may recall on the previous page, you're looking at this business with the, with the C, uh, with the combination, the 4 and the C and the 0, and the 4 and the C and the 1. You may have thought, hey, I, I know how to do this. I, I remember Pascal's triangle, right? And so Pascal's triangle from, uh, from algebra 2 was this, and you might have been using that to find these coefficients that I was using the combination notation. But the thing is, with the 20th power, we're, we can't do that, right? We're not going to uh, use a, um, we're not going to use Pascal's triangle and figure out what's happening in the 20th row or uh, however you want to uh, label it of Pascal's triangle. So, following the pattern, on the previous page, it's going to be the combination of 20. So we'll, for each of the combinations, it always began with the exponent, right? And then it's going to be the combination of 20 taken 12 at a time. See, these numbers are going to match for each term. And there I have the, uh, the ninth term. I'm actually not going to worry about simplifying this. It's obviously going to be a very large number. This is going to be a calculator key in. I'm going to key in 2 to the 12th. I'm going to get a very large coefficient, some very large coefficient, and then x to the 12th and y to the 8th. So uh, probably uh, you may want to revisit this for the, to get your, make sure you have your basic pattern down and, and really start to understand how these, uh, these combination notations work. And like I say, in, in a later lesson, we'll break down a, and give it a little bit more meaning, a little bit more of an intuitive understanding of, the, of these uh, Cs here instead of uh, just using a formula.